the Great Sphinx towers over the plateau of Giza in Egypt. It is part of an enormous vista that covers the whole plain. Reigning over the banks of the Nile River, the Sphinx stands sentinel to the silent desert and spectacular pyramids that surround it. For generations, the saga of past civilizations has been handed down from father to son. Now, in a fairyland of light, the story of the most grandiose achievements and spectacles of the ancient world is retold nightly. With each new dawn, I see the sun god rise on the far bank of the Nile. His first ray is for my face, which is turned towards him. And for 5,000 years, I have seen all the suns men can remember come up in the sky. I saw the history... Great monumental pyramids built by the pharaohs in the dawn of time preserve part of the earliest civilization on earth. This is the place where history began. For thousands of generations, the soil in the fertile delta and Nile Valley of Egypt has been tilled by man. It is land which one day bore footprints of the children of Israel, a land that secretly harbors the spot where baby Moses was hid in the bulrushes. Across the countryside, peasants tend animals in much the same way as man has done through the centuries of time. The country gets little rain, so the rich land along the life-giving Nile is laced with canals to irrigate crops. Creaking water wheels endlessly lift water into the fields. Where the river's sustenance ends, the rust-red desert begins with cruel abruptness. Egypt is alive with artifacts of the past. History blooms in the landscape. It is a nation that has outlived many empires that have ruled it. Persian, Macedonian, Roman, Byzantine, Arab, and Turkish. On the northern coast, the blue waters of the Mediterranean roll toward weathered hotels in the ancient city of Alexandria. The Nile River flows through Cairo, largest of all African cities. Modern buildings contrast with winding alleyways and courtyards of medieval Cairo. The city is a collage of influences. With nearly six million people, Cairo has become overcrowded and problem racked Living space is scarce. Hundreds have started building atop the mausoleums and tombs crowded together in the silent, dusty fields of the section known as the City of the Dead. The world's greatest collection of archaeological relics is preserved in the Cairo Museum. Gold furnishings of the pharaohs, inlaid tombs, weapons of war, and works of art. Inscriptions cut in stone for eternity date back to biblical times and beyond. The streets of Cairo are filled with people carrying incredible cargoes on their heads. All keep moving amid donkey-powered carts, decrepit buses, speeding trains, stubby little trolleys, and the blaring horns of cars and trucks. The Egyptian lives an unhurried life. The three most popular words in Egypt are Inchala, which means God willing, Bokra, which means tomorrow, and Melesh, which means never mind. Egyptians have a shallow capacity for hate. They believe life is too short to be cluttered with bilious debris. Nine Egyptians out of ten are Mohammedan. Five times each day the calls echo from the birdcage cupolas of the minarets. The museums summon the faithful to prayer and millions begin to murmur, there is no God but Allah. The Seventh-day Adventist Church is one of the Christian religions that serve a small minority of the 35 million people of Egypt. Just 
One hundred years ago, seven persons accepted the Sabbath message in the seaport of Alexandria. It was the beginning of the Adventist work in Egypt. Growth has been extremely slow. Today, Alexandria has only 60 members who meet for Sabbath services. But through the years, great effort has been made to build the Adventist church in this land complex of offices and living apartments in the Heliopolis section of Cairo is maintained for limited personnel to direct the 14 churches located throughout Egypt. Across the street from the headquarter offices is a beautiful sanctuary. The members are friendly and warm-hearted. Among them is Malasa Andal, once an ambassador for the Middle East and a delegate to the United Nations. His brother took over the Ethiopian government after Haile Selassie's fall and was killed. Because of the political situation in Ethiopia, the ambassador is now a refugee living in Cairo. When Mr. Ando was in India several years ago, someone told him he should send his daughter to Spicer College. She later attended Andrews University. Through her, Takui, and Malasa Ando learned the Adventist message and were baptized two years ago. A short distance from the church, 700 elementary students are enrolled in classes. 15 of the 25 teachers are Adventists. Religion is taught separately. The Bible to children from Christian homes, the Koran to those with Islamic backgrounds. The influence of the Adventist teachers is keenly sensed, and through the years the school has earned a good reputation. Aim of the church around the world is to reach the children. A portion of the 13th Sabbath overflow this quarter has been designated to establish more elementary schools in Egypt. A dusty road 10 miles outside Cairo leads to a boarding academy known as the Coptic Adventist Theological Seminary. The school is recognized by the government and accredited by the Ministry of Education. Two student missionaries, Brian Allender of La Sierra and Jeff Rappert from Columbia Union College, say the school actually serves academy-age youth, but because of the requirements to adopt a seminary-type program, it is called a theological seminary. A beautiful new health food factory has just opened in Cairo. Mainline product is soy milk designed to supplement protein in the diet. The investment in this plant is a quarter of a million dollars. The manager optimistically projects that such an investment will pay off well. Peanut butter and soybean spreads are being absorbed by an eager market as fast as they can be produced. Twenty years ago, a 13th Sabbath offering provided an evangelistic center in the heart of Cairo. As the city has made improvements, the location of the center has taken on increased prominence. Evangelist Sarur reports that through public evangelism, 80 persons in Egypt were baptized into the Adventist church in 1977. Erna Kruger, now 70 years of age, is a pillar of the church in Egypt. Born in Germany, Erna took nurses training in Berlin. At age 24, she and her new husband left their home near Frankfurt to open a hydrotherapy clinic in Egypt. Within a short time, her husband died, and in a few weeks she lost her six-month-old baby. Discouraged and with little incentive to live, Erna began private nursing in Cairo. She made better money than the mission paid, so she turned her paycheck over to the church and asked them to pay her missionary wages. In 1947, a home for orphaned and underprivileged children was opened in Cairo. Erna was asked to direct this welfare outreach of the church. During World War II, she was the only overseas worker permitted to stay in Egypt. 
she has experienced many hard times. But she says, God has always supplied my needs. One time, we were so low on money that neither I nor the home nor the mission had a single piaster. But that day, the mail brought a $50 check. For the last 30 years, she has devoted her life to the care of 25 to 50 children at a time. And that is a story uh, how the animals move in. You see, it is 120 years since Noah started to build the ark. The great ship is finished, 60 feet high and 600 feet long. It has become a landmark. Her day begins at 5 a.m and ends at 10 each night. It. Although all have become so used to it, they don't even bother to go near to Smiling with anymore. satisfaction, Mama Kruger says, look at all the children God has given me in my lifetime. Through a single life of love and devotion, scores of children have been trained as Christians in a land saturated with Islamic teachings. From the little chapel at the home, scores of boys and girls have gone on to Middle East College in Beirut. Some have become teachers, ministers, nurses. Mama Kruger keeps in touch with everyone. She knows where they are and what they are doing. From the land of Egypt, this is Mission Spotlight reporting. Daddy!